In this video, we're going to be talking about the dynamic EQ, which can be found right here inside of Ozone 8's module area. The dynamic EQ is a processor that can be useful in controlling specific frequencies in your mix that are too loud, with a degree of precision not possible with a normal EQ. The circles on the display mark each of the six possible frequency nodes. Each one of these nodes, just like a regular EQ, has a frequency, gain, and bandwidth control. There are also the five filter types that come inside of Ozone. What sets apart the dynamic EQ from a regular EQ is the ability to add compression to the nodes. The threshold can be set right here, and each one of the nodes has a threshold setting in the same spot. As I was saying before, each one of the nodes has five different filter types. Backs and Dull Bass, a Band or Shelf, a Peak or Bell, a Proportional Q, and a Backs and Dull Treble. To adjust any of the frequency nodes frequency point or gain, simply click on the node and move up and down for gain and left to right for frequency. You can also use the parameter controls at the bottom of the app. Here we have the Q value, the gain value, and the frequency position. This is very useful if you want something very specific. Double click and type 200 Hz for example. You can also hold down control and click and drag to get more precise movements. If you hold shift and drag up and down, the frequency position will be locked. If you hold down shift and go left or right, the gain position will be locked. The Q can be controlled by the handlebars on the sides of the node. The dynamic EQ also has mid-side mode and left-right mode, which allows you to process the audio signal in different ways. I think the best thing to do is to go ahead and try to manipulate the track we have loaded using the dynamic EQ. Let's go ahead and listen to what we have. Before we do that, I want to set this position back to its normal starting point, so all I need to do is double click it. Let's go ahead and listen. Oh, brother killing brother, we no care for one another. It's a shame, it's a shame. We may be different from each other, different color, different mother. But we were all born the same, oh, brother. So let's say that I don't like the bassiness of that snare. What I can do is use the dynamic EQ to attenuate the bassy frequency of that snare every time it happens, but let that frequency be left alone when the snare isn't happening. And I do that with the compressor on one of the nodes. So what I'm going to do is actually deactivate these other nodes because they do take up CPU whether or not they're actually being used. We're going to focus on node 3. But what I'm going to do is play the music again, and while holding down the Alt key, I'm going to be able to solo a set range of frequencies to hone in on exactly where the bassy part of that snare is happening. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, brother, killing brother, we no care for one another. It's a shame, it's a shame. We may be different from each other, different color, different mother. But we were all born the same, oh. It's a shame. It's a shame. So I think it's right around here. And if I double click here now, the active node, band 3, will move to that position. That makes things quicker and easier and I won't lose the position in the frequency range. Now I want to bring down the gain because I want to attenuate this signal. I'm also going to bring in the Q value so we can really pinpoint exactly where that bassiness is happening. Then I want to come over to the threshold and adjust it while the music is playing until I get the right amount of attenuation specifically for that frequency range. Oh, brother killing brother, we no care for one another. It's a shame, it's a shame. We may be different from each other, different color, different mother. But we were all born the same, oh. Now let's hit the gain match just so we always have that. It's not very necessary right now at this point, but it's a good idea to always have it on. And let's go ahead and bypass the dynamic EQ to see what's happened to that snare. Oh, brother killing brother, we no care for one another. It's a shame, it's a shame. We may be different from each other, different color, different mother. But we were all born the same, oh. Brother killing brother, we no care for one now remember, I still have the ability to take off more if I want. 
I can also really reduce the threshold here, which means that only when there's a boost, which usually happens when that snare is happening, that's when the cut will take place. This is what makes the dynamic EQ really great because you'll have noticed when I soloed that particular frequency band, there was a lot of vocal in that area as well. This way the vocal is going to be allowed to pass through and the sound is only going to get attenuated when the snare actually happens because the snare is a lot louder in the mix than the vocal. And you can actually see that happening inside of the spectrum display. That's exactly what we're looking for, and that's exactly why the Dynamic EQ is so powerful. We can also hold down Alt and click the node to solo that particular node's frequency range. Let's go ahead and do that while the music's playing. So remember, pulling down the threshold is going to cut out more frequency range and cut out more frequencies from that particular frequency spot. Pulling down the gain is going to cut just the frequencies when the threshold is crossed. So it's a little bit of give and take between the two, but precision is what makes the dynamic EQ so powerful. Let's just go one more example. What I'm going to do is kind of roll off the high ends because I think that the hi-hats are a little bit too crispy in this particular mix. So what I'm going to do is activate band 6 select the tab so I can see its controls and we're going to make sure we have the Baxendahl treble selected and let's go ahead and move the frequency just a little bit below 10k and let's pull the gain down just a little bit maybe about negative 1 dB so let's go ahead and click in there double click negative 1 and let's play the audio oh, brother killing brother we no care for one another it's a shame, it's a shame We may be different from each other Different color, different mother But we were all born the same old Brother killing brother We no care for one another It's a shame, it's a shame We may be different from each other Different color, different mother But we were all born the same old Brother killing brother We no care for So there we go what we've done is taken the bass off of that snare and kind of toned down the hi-hats inside of the mix using the dynamic EQ module. Now, let's talk about analog and digital. Analog uses the minimum phase FIR or finite impulse response filter type, which is useful in a variety of situations but does slightly alter the sound due to phase manipulation. Digital, on the other hand, uses a linear phase IIR or infinite impulse response filter, which retains the phase of the original signal, but it does use more CPU. So it's more transparent, but heavier on the computer. So again, there's a trade-off. Analog is almost always gonna warm your sound or ch alter your sound in different ways. It's also known as coloring the audio in the business, and digital is gonna be more transparent, but use more CPU processing. Now let's talk about down and up. Down will act as a compressor, and up will act as an expander. Right now we have it on down, which means that when the sound crosses the threshold, this particular frequency node will filter out those frequencies by moving down. And that's what we noticed inside of the spectrum earlier. Oh, brother killing brother, we no care for one another. However, if we switch to up, you'll see that that solid white line is actually moved to the filter node's starting point. And now once the audio crosses the threshold, this white line will actually move back up to zero dB, essentially acting as a booster or an expander. And if we actually bring it above zero dB, now we're really getting expansion happening. Oh. Brother killing brother, we no care for one another It's a shame, it's a shame We may be different from each other, different color, different mother so at this point, it should be fairly obvious that the Dynamic EQ can really help you sculpt the final sound of your master. The final parameter I want to talk about is the Auto Scale feature. When this is enabled, Ozone automatically scales attack and release times based on frequency. When the auto scale is disabled, the attack and release times of each band will not scale with the frequency as with a conventional compressor. 
That means you can come in and change the attack and release manually. But if you are new to Ozone 8, I suggest leaving Auto Scale feature enabled and letting Ozone do the work for you. So at this point, you should have a better understanding of what the Dynamic EQ is, how to use it, and why it's a really powerful tool inside of the Ozone 8 suite. Let's move on to the next video.